Grand National Championships. Hello, 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 hello. You're listening to Grand National Championships on the internet. My name is Alistair. Uh, with me tonight, we have Jotham Fady, Corin Atchison, hello. and Jared McLeod. Hello. I hope everyone's having a splendid time, whatever time you're listening to this. I guess this is coming out on August 15th, Saturday. That's um, through no design in particular that's what's uh been cemented as our release date every week uh we record this on fridays typically although now that might be kind of in flux you know we'll change it up here and there but saturdays is when the show comes out if you have anything you want to talk to us about that's part of my um my goings on in these uh these past days since we met up last is that I reorganized all of the social media or as much of it as you can, as you can, uh, configure. Um, I changed the twi- I didn't change the Twitter. <laughs> it's at the GNC show. Uh, email is still us us at the GNC show. I did change Instagram to at the GNC show. And if you want to visit our website, that is the GNC show.com. It'll take you to the same place. You can still use grand national championships.com if you want to, but just for ease of memory, it's all the GNC show now. And of course, if you want to call us and leave a voicemail, the phone number is seven, two, seven, three, seven, nine, four, three, three, five. And can uh, talk to us about any number of things. You can ask us questions. Sometimes we'll put out something to the public at large some kind of request for information you can follow that if you want to or just freestyle it or just freestyle if you want to drop a beat so um corin you've got the most interesting pose right now what have uh, what have you been up to lately uh yeah i had a i had a decent week i um boy there's a lot going on i will i will say there was enough going on this week that i don't have a new installment Corn's cheese corner. Colon, oh. I don't know how to say this cheese. Uh, I bought the cheese. I just haven't had time to eat it. Oh, so yeah. you're saying like there was a new cheese, but you just don't have a review yet? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It'll have to wait till next week. I'm sorry. Well, that's okay. Um, I I went on some dates this week. Um, Do tell. Yeah. So uh, one of them involved going to a uh, a nude beach uh which was <laughs> a new date experience for me um is this, is this a first date or if this someone you've seen a few times <laughs> no th- th- yeah that would be well it'd be an okay first date Get everything uh, out of confidence the way. yeah uh no it was like we we hung out enough times to have already seen each other naked so that was already off the you know you off know, the table were, off, off the table those nerves were gone already so like the, no, those was, nerves they, were dead i got you <laughs> no feeling just just the nerves related to being uh naked in front of strangers um, now how were those strangers they were great you know humans are beautiful I'll i have a question so, i'm sorry for interjecting so much okay. i'm just i'm just so no, excited please i this is why i'm here were you wearing a mask uh, for part of the time, until we got to our little tucked away, well, not tucked away spot, but like we were distanced from everyone else. So we felt that we were within our rights. What I want to, to know is our mask. <laughs> if and at any point were you walking around completely nude, but with a mask on? Yes. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> that's all I wanted. That's all I wanted to be able to picture, Corin. <laughs> I'm happy to share that with you. 
Uh, yeah, because there, there, we got there uh, in the like mid afternoon, and there's trees that were kind of around the perimeter of this beach area. And as the sun was going down, we had to like chase chase the sunlight, so we had to like move the blanket. You don't want to be in the shade in the Pacific Northwest. It's cold, and you're naked, and it's cold. So you yeah. want to be in the sun. Naked. It's warm. Yeah. <laughs> now, did you, how much planning did you have to go to this nude beach? Did you just know like the day before? Was it like let's go right now? Uh, did yeah, you go to the I gym had, and pump up first? You got to. I wish. I know Jotham uh, would pump up. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I did some air squats and push-ups, but like I, I mean, a- obviously I did air squats. <laughs> uh, yeah. I you can probably guess this wasn't my idea, not that I was against it, obviously, <laughs> but this was um something that was uh presented to me very last minute. Like, oh, why don't we go do this? This will be exciting and fun. So I had almost no time to prepare. But luckily at New Beach, you don't need to prepare much. Right. I guess, I mean, yeah, I guess you just got what the good Lord gave you at that point. Physically, you've been preparing for a while, but mentally you didn't have long to prepare. Correct. Correct. He's been training his whole life for this. <laughs> for this event. <laughs> this no, is I mean, why we play the game. You. I'm happy for you. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah, I will. I don't know why, but I appreciate it. Um, I don't know why. Now, I... I was going to say, I, I have a question. Just, I know um, there's kind of a stereotype of the the naturalist, the nudist, maybe being someone who's like a, a little out of shape, someone who, like, uh, who. Were there a lot of fit people at, at the beach, or was it like a real want, a schlub you want fest? Me to rate, rate everyone's looks. Yeah, because I would never go out there myself for fear of that happening to me. But it's I know the ones you want to see. It's right. never the ones you want to see. Untrue. Uh, I don't know if it's Seattle in general, but there are. A, I mean, it's a big Top city. Tier. There are a lot of very attractive people that live here, and many of them were nude at the beach. That <laughs> probably about eighty percent of the population. No, God. Uh, okay. Good. The there, I will say though, you know, stereotypically there were uh, about you know five older gentlemen who were there by themselves. Uh, some of them nude, some of them partaking, some of them just there, some of them just taking. Yeah. <laughs> Always exactly. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Stealing glances, uh, masks, masked on some of them. Some of the <laughs> nude older gentlemen were there with their masks on, which was I appreciated and a hat on, which was real weird. Cause so it's it like they're like, incognito, except for their very identifiable <laughs> genitalia. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All of their leathery genitalia was out, except you couldn't all see their, their face. All of it. Uh, but yeah, it, it, it's a, it was a mixed bag, so to speak, of various different... <laughs> I don't appreciate that bag. kind of talk. Um, so that was that was one fun activity, and then... Well, we're the, done was, with the nude beach. There have to be more questions than that. Oh, Jared's been silent this whole time. I've made him completely uncomfortable. Do, do you, like, no, no, are, I've, I, I went to a nude beach uh, as, uh, as a young person as a boy as a, Ger- as a german all, all boy the, uh, yeah all, all the uh, all the beaches there were uh optional. i mean that's just how it went yeah it's optional so i, I have some exper- prior experience but i haven't been to one since, that must so have just been the, like how old of a boy were you at that point sorry joe uh between six and ten we went it was like the only place to go that was like the beach in in berlin it was called the bonze did, it did you like find it absolutely mind-blowing as a 10 year old was it yes. was it that much at the forefront of your mind to be like, oh my god, look at all these nakeds all around yeah, absolutely. me? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, it was tremendous. <laughs> but that but that helped to make you so mature nowadays that you don't even right. have any questions I mean, for Corey. Obviously, that's what I'm getting at. Yeah, <laughs> yeah right. It desensitized me. I just want yeah, everyone yeah, to know really how comfortable I am around well beautiful yeah. naked women. <laughs> Yeah, we all know Jared for his European sensibilities. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, in but in Germany, like, uh, did your southern parents 
like make more of an influence on you like being surprised by the nudity or were you like influenced by the culture where it wasn't a big deal i wasn't like it wasn't a big deal i think my mom like had a heart attack like at first but ultimately decided that it was like i guess totally fine if this <laughs> is the only remember, way we can go to the beach i don't remember anything like weird and negative being associated with it like whenever we went there so if, yeah. if like having to deal with the little schnitzel is the only way that you can get to the sand like <laughs> go for it what are you talking about <laughs> schnitzel i don't i don't know all the german words so i assume everything means sausage <laughs> Sorry, Corn. So, so, what other fun did you have besides um, being, uh, you know, naked in public? Uh, beside being naked, I watched two movies of very low caliber that both portrayed Latin Americans in a negative way. Um, in different negative. Well, Go no, on. Assen- <laughs> essentially the same way. So, I, I ended up watching The Tax Collector. Are you familiar with this new new work by David Ayer? Yeah, I. Like esteemed Sh- Shia LaBeouf. Yeah, esteemed LaBeouf. director of Suicide Squad, uh, and writer and director of Training Day. Yeah, um, yeah. He wrote this new movie where every uh, Latin person in L.A. is a member of a gang, and there's a clear dividing line between who's good and who's bad. And, and you can tell one, because yeah, <laughs> the good ones. Guess who they pray to? Jesus. Jesus. Thank you. That was a real question. Guess. Yeah. (laughs) Or imperative. Sorry. Uh, And then guess who the bad ones pray to? Uh, Jesus? Satan. (laughs) Oh, they pray to Satan. Yeah, yeah. They like, uh, they they make it easy for you. Right. Yeah, it's really easy. You don't have to think too much. They do like sacrifices and they um, like kill a virgin and bathe in her blood. Latin Americans who are Satan worshippers. No, I'm not answering that question. But in this no, movie, I, yes. Jared, that's what, that's what, Jared, that's come on. I'm These saying. are the problems we're trying to solve, Jared. Listen, I got a couple things I want to talk about <laughs> regarding to the Latin American community. So uh, it was a whole, um, a whole army of Satanists, uh, who were a gang of Satanists. Right. Yeah. So like the good gang members were. Christians and the bad gang members were. Uh, it, it wasn't. In, it wasn't clear if it was particularly Satan, but they were uh, doing sacrifices and paganism and you know non Jesusy things. Santa so, Rio. Yeah. Uh, Blood David, orgies. David Ayer is uh, a king of nuance, and um, <laughs> I liked the story that Shia LaBeouf got. He was playing a character called Creeper, who was like their enforcer, the gang's enforcer. Did he only run around like uh, in a crab position, like crab walking? <laughs> Look at this creeper. Uh, he got a huge tattoo on his <sighs> stomach that said "creeper" on it. In in preparation for this movie, um, he is wearing a three piece suit the entire movie. Was it was it you who posted something on social media about this? Because I saw someone post, I can't remember who it was, on some platform. I'm watching this movie that Shia LaBeouf got a crazy tattoo for, and it's way into the movie, and I still haven't seen the crazy tattoo. So it was like, that was like a big thing in it. It was like the moment in... Um, um, in uh was that Sharon Stone movie where she spread her legs for the camera? It's like the moment that everyone's looking forward to, like when's Shia LaBeouf gonna like unleash that stuff? Yeah, reveal his <laughs> meet rhyme. I have, I, have meet, I, have meet, I have rhyme. I think we just found the subtitle for this show. Shia LaBeouf's gonna unleash that stuff. Oh darn it. <laughs> uh he he does get naked at one point, but uh it he's covered in blood and you can't see anything. Uh not spoilers. even the tattoo? No, not even the tattoo. Yeah, it wasn't me who posted that, but yeah, I thought that was funny. And then I just watched, uh, I was just watching a very new release, just came out today, uh, featuring um, our, uh, my, my hero, Joseph Gordon-Levitt. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Oh, is it the plane movie? The no, celeb- I already celebrity that one. who you most resemble. Uh, yeah, this one is called Something About Power. Project Power? It's oh, him. that sounds familiar. Yeah, it's him and uh, Jamie Foxx. 
and a young a young mm. woman whose whose name I don't know. But now, did, was a, there a lip sync battle going on at some point? It sounds like those two could have a sick lip sync oh, battle. I would love that. <laughs> what song do you think uh, JGL would do? Um, fame by oh, yeah, or a Jeremy Renner song? <laughs> yeah. Jotham, I will come over there. You, you retract that statement. He would do something good and pure. Something tasteful. Yeah. Uh, yeah, probably like an arcade fire song or something. I don't know. <laughs> he loves something, those multi Something obscure bands. but safe. Yeah, totally. Um, so yeah, it's about taking a pill and it gives you superpowers for five minutes. It's a like, oh, lim- lim- like limitless, but you don't limitless. know what the superpower is going to be, right? Mm-hmm, correct, yeah. But the problem oh, is nice. that Latin American gangs are selling Satanists? Drugs. Oh, sorry. Uh, Wait, say, Latin American gangs are what? Selling, selling the drug on the street. Uh, and JGL has to, he's a cop, which is unfortunate also. But he's a bad cop, which I guess is good. <laughs> Wait, what? Right? It's like two bad. <laughs> the enemy <laughs> of my enemy <laughs> is my friend. <laughs> he's a cop, here. but he takes bad drugs. Bad cops are good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's a very nuanced. Oh my God, Jared is Jared is a Satanist. Oh, I knew it all along. I knew one of us. It's like, it's like that movie Devil, where it turns out one of them is the devil. Well, it was yeah. Jared. It came very early. Oh, he's back. All right. So yeah, that was that was my week, guys. I watched some movies and I got naked. Oh, by the way, I should. Ex- oh, sorry. I'm, no, I'm sorry please. about everything that happened to you. I was, but when I just screamed that Jared is the devil, it's because his screen went red for the, anyone who's not watching the video. Oh, right. um, I, th- I only think of uh, things that we're able to have visual cues for. But yeah, Jared just looked like a Sith Lord for a second. <laughs> He's trying it again. All right. Now, in the past, when we did a radio show here in Tampa Bay, <laughs> the city of Tampa Bay. I love when people do that. City of Tampa Bay. We talked about celebrities who we most resemble. And I, I uh, said that I would be like David Cross's head in a bowl of mashed potatoes. <laughs> That's probably what I look like the most. Jared has contended that he could be played in a movie by Benicio del Toro in his in his no, no, prime. No. I got a, I got a brand new one. That's, this, way that, more accurate. that's what I want to know. I, and okay. then we're going to get to Jotham next. <laughs> okay. Uh, the dude who plays uh, is in Game of Thrones, who was John's uh, the fat guy friend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, John's fat friend. Hogarth? What, what was it? Yeah, His name is not Hogarth, and there's no one named Hogarth in the whole show. Hogarth. Them. Hogarth. No. Um, Isn't that the Viking character from the Sunday comic strip? Hogarth the horrible. No, that's Hagar. That's the horrible. Hag- Hagar the horrible. What is wrong with you people? Listen um, a lot. Uh, Wait, we're talking about Game of Thrones, right? Yeah, yeah. I can't remember what is. I can't remember. What Samuel his name Tarly is, but, is the yeah, character. Yeah. Tarly, yeah, yeah, yeah. But the guy, the actor. Hodor. Uh, that's what I was trying to say. We oh. know what you were trying to say. <laughs> no, I didn't know what I was trying to say. No. Uh, yeah, we have a striking resemblance in the face. <laughs> Ouch. Um, okay, Samuel Tarly, played by what the hell is that guy's name? No idea. Do, do you need us to research this on the fly? I'm trying to research. Samwise re- Gamgee. <laughs> Jen, that's, a, that's Lord <laughs> Damn of the Rings. Them. <laughs> Damn it, Joe. Uh, John Bradley. Okay, I never knew that. Well, okay, so Jared, you resemble the face of John Bradley. You're not yes. quite as rotund. At least no, not, not, not as he was. It was hard to tell. He wore a lot of um, layers of leather and, uh, can, and yeah. black fur. Hmm. Not, not unlike Jared. <laughs> when he's in the uh, in the shade in the Pacific Northwest, he's got to layer up. That's right. Now, Jotham, what celebrity do you think you most resemble? Who could play you in a movie? Uh, I've gotten Mark Duplass before. I remember Ooh. you saying that. I think he's was he the he guy was who was on the league? league? Yeah, he's got a brother. Directors. Yeah, they they make mumblecore movies where everybody kind of stops and starts and stammers when they talk to each other. Didn't they do uh, Wild Wild Country? Yeah. That's a documentary, right? So yeah. I was thinking more of their feature films where they give people lines to speak. It would make more sense in a documentary that people might stumble and stammer because they're not scripted. Hmm. Okay, sorry. Much like we do here. 
Jared, now that we've mm-hmm. cracked uh, celebrities whom we most resemble, could you tell us what you've been up to for the past week or so? Uh, just working, working out. Uh, I got some of them little uh, keto strips that you urinate on, and it shows you if oh. you're in ketosis or not. Yeah, you're getting and ready I for am. the nude beach. <laughs> nice. So are you shedding pounds like nobody's business? I'm shedding pee because I'm peeing all of these things every chance I get <laughs> trying to find out. Is that how you lose weight? It's like what you're going to want to do is just, just piss like as, 90, as often as possible. 90% of the reason I'm in this is because I'm trying to pee on stuff. And this like kind of <laughs> helps that Any need. excuse, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, about it, really. So you go, you went keto? Yeah. How yeah, long? And I want to drop some pounds because I gained a few. Over, quarantine. Uh, quarantine. How, uh, how long has it been now? Two weeks. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's a long road, yeah, yeah. my friend. Yeah, it is. I wish you luck. I'm just trying to drop like 20 pounds. Do you just keep a, keep a picture of Sam Well Tarly up on the wall? Just like look at it every day, like, <laughs> not today, Sam Well. <laughs> Sam Wise Tar Ganji. <laughs> Sam Wise Ganji. Uh, I'm building a computer for a friend. Um, and uh, that's really about it. You're What's not, this computer? Sorry, go ahead, Corn. You're not building yourself a uh, computer right now? No, because I'm waiting. There's a graphics card that's coming out on September 1st that I'm waiting for, so I'm just waiting to hit that pre order button as soon as it becomes the available. The computer that Jared is building hasn't even been invented yet. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's not like the graphics card isn't even out. They haven't even figured out how to make it yet, but that's the one that he's getting. Jared, explain to us uh, why you want the best graphics card ever and what specifically you're building this computer for. Uh, because I have a nice 4K HDR display that I want to utilize to its full potential. Don't, don't fucking lie to me. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <I'm done. laughs> what do you think is casting this bright white light on my face? Giving me a tan every day. That's your circle light. <laughs> uh, yeah. And it's called a ring to- light to to Whatever. get the most fidelity <laughs> like visual fidelity possible so that and you the can play cyberpunk 2077 there it is that's what i wanted <laughs> you're gearing up for it <laughs> well amongst other things but that's the that's the main driving force behind all the power is that the new benchmark that's like the one that's like can it you know but can it run crisis it's probably going to be it hasn't I think it's coming out in November, or I don't. It may have been postponed until next year. It's like supposed to be November, but it might be. Yeah. yeah, it might have been postponed. So, it sounds like Jotham doesn't know anything, and he was just trying to make it sound <laughs> no, like. That's true. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, the problem is, it's probably been postponed. Or whatever, postponed. <laughs> oh, I, no, I'm excited. I'm excited about that game. Are you going to be yeah. running it, Mister Regular Ass vids. Graphic Card that already exists? No, I would have to. I would have to buy one of the new systems that came out. Have Jared build it for you? Out. Yeah. Uh, you ever thought bringing? Have you ever thought about bringing in an outside consultant like a Jared McLeod, Jotham? I have not. I'll tell you what; his rates are very reasonable. <laughs> I assume. Well, let's let's talk <laughs> offline about that. No problem. So, in Cyberpunk is the video game that uh, stars Keanu Reeves. Correct. correct. Well, yeah. he's one of the characters. I don't think he's the star, but yeah, well, he's mean, in there. You were the using star. his. They're using his likeness. Yeah. Correct. Johnny uh, Silver, I think the name is the is the name of the character. Johnny Silver. He's, yeah, I think Sounds so. Cool. Silver something. Silver Mane. Sounds very cool. Something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's in a band. He's like a uh, mercenary, and he has a band in in universe in that because it's based sort of t- hold on. Uh, tabletop RPG. You made it sound like three different things. He's in a band. He's a mercenary. <laughs> and he's in a band. He's, he's like in another th- band. He's in two bands. Oh, okay. He's like a but real this, Joseph this Sadie. Is, it's a well-established character in the tabletop RPG, and I guess like it was a big deal when they revealed that it was going to be him. So, yeah, he's like a rock star slash mercenary something. Is he like that character in the Dennis Leary show who is named like Johnny Rock, who is like an old-school punk rocker? <laughs> Hi, I'm Johnny Rock. <laughs> kind of looks that way, actually. Well, None it would be a little cooler know. if his name were about like the type of music he played, like rock. <laughs> Maybe it could be Johnny Punk, so there's no copyright. Teddy Ambient. Teddy Ambient. <laughs> Teddy Ambient. <laughs> <laughs> that makes me happy. Corin, did I cut Billy, you off? Were you going to say something? Billy no, Rock and Billy. No, nothing as good as that. <laughs> <laughs> Those are good. Jared, uh, Jared is dropping bombs. Billy Rock and Billy. Teddy Ambient. Teddy uh, this Ambient. whole crew. 
<laughs> uh, Jotham, what have you been? Um, what have you been doing the last week or so? I went to a watering hole that was different. It sounds like than the uh, experience Corin had. So I was in Central Florida today, and on the way there, stopping at gas station, no masks. This is a no mask land, mm. apparently. And um, then getting there, um, I wouldn't have really wanted to see any of them at a nude beach. Um, not the most beautiful people where I was today. <laughs> this is inland Everyone's Florida. Beautiful. Hey, but they were free. Uh, they were wearing they, a mask. They sure were. They didn't have nobody they sure pushing were. them around. People were not treading on them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I did that. Um, you know, kayak, snorkeled. It was a lot of fun. I had, I had not been out of uh, Hillsborough County since March, so much needed. Snorkeling, kayaking, how much uh, ground you cover? On the kayak? Yeah. I have no idea. I think it was an hour, hour and 20 minute kayak trip. You're on like a river? Yeah, Alexander Springs. I guess Alexander River. Sounds right. I'll take that. You got a place to rent that kayak? You got your own gear? Met my parents up there, and they brought a kayak. You've never met your parents before? That is amazing. <laughs> it was a big day. It was a big day. And Here to celebrate, goes. Here's I got some kayak, blue, blue crabs after. Oh, yeah. He sent a, he sent a picture to our, uh, to our text group. Jared really wants to say something. What's up, buddy? Excuse me one moment. Apparently somebody's at my door. Oh, my God. This is oh. weird. Oh, God. All right, guys. Oh, my God. Jared's about to get murdered. I'm really murdered. scared. Yeah. yeah. This is tough. Are is you guys in on this? We hired a hitman. <laughs> it's, it's Johnny, Johnny Silverman. Silverman. <laughs> I hear he's also he did, in a he band. Just, his side project just finished playing a show. I saw those crabs. You got some crabs, some smoked mullet. Yeah, and had some fish spread. Um, mm. I got got sunburned. Um, it was uh, it was a long day. That's a Florida uh, day. A lot, uh, yeah, very Florida day. It was a lot of fun. Um, Crack some also, cold ones. Yeah, I had no cold ones. Nothing but flat water all day. I'm so sorry. Can't even get a little seltzer for my man? Well, I came back and I forgot I had... Well, I don't want to um, endorse a product on this show. No, but, do uh, it, man. I, there, there's some bubble. <laughs> well, spin drift. I mean, it's like a tea sparkling water. Spin drift? Spin drift. <laughs> spin drift. <laughs> I hope they endorse me. I mean... Yeah. That was Fast and the Furious give it, give it Part that. 2, <sighs> Spin Drift. <sighs> I like that. And then I um, this week I started making a playlist of about people, like people's names. So, song title, a name, song about a person is, is what I started uh, creating. Well, I'm not sure I understand. So, okay. So, for example, the playlist starts Like Angie with, by the Rolling Stones, Veronica by Elvis Costello. There you go. There you go. Ideally, ideally, you you hear the person's name, like you can tell, oh, that song's about that person, because there's some that have you know um, titles that you don't hear the person's name um, throughout the song. So, so what you get, what do you have on there so far? Give us a, a few uh, examples um, of your faves. So let's see. Starts out with Boris Iggy the Pop, Spider, Iggy Pop, Michelle, Caribou, Desiree, Prince, Darling Nikki, uh, Magnetic Fields. Uh, Black Lips, Okatrina, Los Psychos. Wait, you just said Anna. Magnetic Fields, but you didn't say what their song was. Javier Says. Oh, okay. Which I thought was Xavier. X-A-V-I-E-R. Oh, he says it Javier? Is, yeah. I never would have done that. Um, but we got The Modern Lovers, Pablo Picasso. He not he never Bo got Diddley. called an asshole. That's right. Bo Diddley. Allison, Allison by Slow Dive. Uh, Stephanie Says. But I was Allison gonna ask you, by the what Pixies. Do you, what do you think? What do you think? Allison is on there. Also from that album, there Allison is by Vol- Elvis Costello. Valoria, Valoria is another good one on that Pixies album. That's a name. Sure, right? I Valoria? just think I always just think of Valoria, the fabric. It's a city. <laughs> Valor, but I was going to ask you guys what you would add to uh, to that playlist. Well, I Jared feel like brought there's a couple good ones. I feel like there's like probably ten to twenty different Decemberist songs that you could throw in there. Um, note 10 to 20 December <laughs> that would crumple uh, up that note <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Allison by slow dive Allison by slow dive Allison by pixies <laughs> already on there Allison Valoria. by Allison already, already by Elvis Costello Allison Elvis Costello 
Jeffrey with one F, Jeffrey, but that's not the title of the song, is it? That Pixie song. Jeffrey with what? What's that song called? Uh, it's on. It's, it's on, on Trompe Le Monde. Yeah. Yeah. Right, we'll about, find out someday. How about My Michelle by Guns and Roses? Guns, Guns and Roses. And Roses. <laughs> <laughs> It's a good song. So, uh, and you're yeah. looking for proper names, not like not like a description of their job. You couldn't be like the lineman for the county. Right, exactly. That needs to be a name. Exactly. Okay. And a few a few have snuck on that uh, you don't hear the name in the song. But, but it's, it's in the title. It's in the title, yes. Okay, so name titles. How about uh, Stephanie Says, uh, Sweet Love Jane. Oh, yeah. Um, I have a Christine. I was just seeing the banshees. What's happening to Corin? Is there a pig my, there? My dog. Yeah, my dog is doing things. I don't know. Is there a oh, song? A pig? Is there a song called yeah. "Pig" about the dog? <laughs> there will be. Put something from the Babe soundtrack on there. There will oh, be cool. pig. Wait, who did the song Brandy? <laughs> was that the Guess Who? No, who did that song? Brandy or Brand- Fine Girl? Brandy. Oh yeah, I know it. The the. Who did that song? It's it's I think it's one of those ones whose name I only know because of that song. Looking glass. I'm gonna wanna put looking glass brandy on there. You got that, Jotham? I'm writing all of this down. About uh Yoshimi battles the pink robots. Yoshimi's oh, yeah, the young Yoshimi. woman. That that yeah. that'll make that can make the cut. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. In case we if we have room for some alternates, you know, I'll write that one down. I can't make any promises. I said American names, Jared. <laughs> oh. You know, I'll put you in your place, Jared. Episode. Yeah. No Satanists allowed. So that's taking up most of your time this week, just making that playlist, uh, kayaking and whatnot. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I haven't, I haven't spent that much time with it, but as I've thought of names, I've added, and uh, I will be oh. continuing to add. Okay, oh. last one. Go. Uh-huh. Julian by Carly Rae Jepsen. Julian. 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 Yeah. Julian. Okay. Throw it, write it down. Mark it. That's a real good. Ooh, one. This is. Well, I think so. I think my, we've done all of the name songs. There couldn't be many more than that. There's, there no. can't be many there's more. That, there is that little hidden gem. Hey Jude, I don't know if you've ever heard of that one. I haven't. Or <laughs> Ellen or Rigby. Yeah, ever heard of her? <laughs> Them. Either Ellen or Rigby. <laughs> um, you know, you doing that snorkeling, that kiakin, that is awesome and i enjoy endeavors such as that but on rivers and lakes in florida you know what i'm thinking about gator attack did you i know you probably didn't uh actually get attacked by any gators but did you encounter wildlife that would scare me out of the water i saw a few gators um they were smaller which i feel more comfortable could wrestle them well, I watched that video not long ago of a guy in a kayak, uh, like the gator attacks him. Moves the whole thing. Yeah, you saw it. Yeah. So yeah. I'm thinking of that the whole time. Even though I've grown up in Florida, I've got a very healthy uh, fear of gators. Um, my, well, you my, know, parents saw, uh, my parents saw a black bear right before we went. So we were looking for a black bear the whole time. He was up in a tree and some other people had seen him or her. Thank you. Um, yeah, I, um, you know, I being a, a Floridian... I know what not to do around gators, like get in the water with them. But I know, you know, you know, on land, they're pretty easy to avoid. They're not going to like race after you really. Um, but yeah, that's fu- it, so all you got to oh. do is zigzag. And it's funny. You're going to zigzag. It's funny that people will say who aren't from Florida, how do you get away from a gator if it's coming at you? And everyone from Florida that I know knows to say you just run in a zigzag pattern. That's what they taught you in school. Yeah, that was the craziest thing that, like, I revealed that to people in the Pacific Northwest, and they looked at me like I was a hilljack from, like, the 1910s. Like, like you were just saying like, something like, well, you gotta hang a stake from a tree. You just gotta hang a stake. <laughs> but you got a tor- tornado, you, you go under the desk, gator, you, you run, run in a zigzag. Crazy. Exactly, you just run zigzag. That's how you get away from the gator. And no, I, it, do- it doesn't work. Oh, no. Oh, you've tried it? All no. Lost. They're just very... They're very fast. They're I had fast. 
a panicky moment on a canoe in Mayaka State Park uh, a while ago when I decided I wanted to try to canoe. Mm -hmm. And uh, there were gators all around. They have signs. You can see them and everything. But once I got out on the canoe, I started to have a mild panic attack because when you put the oar down in the water, yes. I could touch the bottom yeah, with, yeah. The, with, with the oar. So all I'm thinking of is seeing all the gators around it around me seeing all that like i'm going to put the oar on a gator and it's going to overturn the boat and then i'm going to get eaten so I, i've had this so thing that lasted since... maybe five minutes before i was sh like i was shaking and i was like i i'm just imagining like the most terrible like they're all around you there, there's no like escaping it so it was like yeah turn this thing around since so, I was a kid, where the the ground the grass goes very high up, where there's like only an inch of water, mm -hmm. I've always thought it's just filled with gators, and I've yeah. just never gone out of my mind. <laughs> that is absolutely the way you should think of any water, <laughs> like any fresh water whose bottom you can't see, is that it's teeming, a teeming mass of like a feeding frenzy of gators. It's, yeah. it's like the king rat, but gators. Rat gator king. Gator, snakes. Like gator king. Gator rat king. Snakes. Uh, so I... I <laughs> My best friend growing up, his dad was super into it's what was called rendezvous. It was basically like reenactments, kind of like Civil War reenactments, but more like frontier reenactments. Less war, more like trading post things. And would they so, take like like um, oh, so they're larping like deer? Yeah. Uh, oh, they, but would they? Was it like straight up like mountain man retreats where they would like like brain tan a pelt or something? Yes, the yeah. whole deal. Nice. Um, there was axe throwing and like uh, powder muskets and all, all, all manner of things. But they they knew all of these frontiersman tricks, and they would when we would go up in, and hang out with them in like Central Florida, they would take us out the kids to the river to swim, and uh, they would tie a dog up on the riverbank, and oh Christ, we didn't know why that was so we asked and they were like oh well gators are more likely they want to go after the dog not the human because it's easier prey so that's our uh that's our alarm system that's our safety that's the canary in the coal mine that's the goat in the tyrannosaur <laughs> paddock <laughs> yes so i say that zigzag is kind of like a stupid southern thing that has been passed on but at least we don't tie dogs up by riverbanks anymore so I think we've evolved as a as a culture. <laughs> yeah, the zigzag was a great technological <laughs> advancement. <laughs> I think the second guy figured that out. Like, the first guy. Got oh, like, <laughs> zigzag. Not not like uh, not like Jeff. <laughs> or Jeff. <laughs> Jeff, R.I.P. Eaten by gator. Ran straight lines. <laughs> Alistair, what's up with you, man? Okay, yeah. don't steer the ship. I've got it. I understand exactly <laughs> whose turn it is. I see. Just trying to just trying to help. Yeah. The road to hell is paved with good intentions. So um the most interesting things that I did this week, I bought some mic stands. I I answered a um an ad in the Facebook marketplace and found someone who actually has a bunch of mutual friends with me who uh posted something it's it's a company that does stage productions and stuff and they had a bunch of surplus mic stands that they don't need because you know they've got uh, however many complete stage kits all set up he said like nine nine shows they can run simultaneously obviously they're not doing that right now because of the whole quarantine shutdown nobody is really able to put on all the shows that they want to but they have all these extra mic stands so i went i bought some some tall boys some little shorties for um kick drums and uh guitar amps i'm pointing to guitar amps next to me here and uh so now i think i have a full complement of microphone stands microphones themselves i've got a digital interface so basically i'm building up enough gear to be able to to run live sessions for the podcast you know to to go record bands so i think i'm just about um fully functional in that regard except i might want to get like a rack case to hold some of the gear in but as bands um as i start to find bands that are in you know large enough environments if they have a space that they use that you know i feel comfortable going in and wearing a mask and kind of like being in moderately close quarters with a band 
uh, who's also maintaining uh, safe uh, precautions as best they can. Going to start doing some um, some live sessions for the podcast. So um, so that was exciting. So you're going to them. Yeah, I don't have a space of my own. I mean, maybe for small acoustic things, I could even invite them to my home to do it. But for anything yeah. that has a drum kit and a bass and guitar, I really need to have like a practice space or something such. S- circle. I have considered that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, going to circle and just, uh, you know, paying for three hours worth of time to record like a half hour, an hour session, you know, wouldn't be that bad. But of course it is uh, ideally um, preferred if they have a practice space already, but you know, practice spaces are hard enough to come by. So enough band, a band that has like a large practice space is truly a, a rare gem. But uh, yeah, Very so cool. I've been going down my checklist, and I'm, I'm just about. Sorry, I had to blow something away. Uh, but I'm just about, uh, just about tip top shape as far as that's concerned. That's also. Exciting. It is very exciting. Oh, also, uh, tangential to that, um, friend of the show, my uh, my bandmate, Laith, uh, Laith Abdel. I don't know. Actually, I have no idea how, how you say his last name. I never <laughs> thought to ask him. I just thought to be his friend. But my bandmate right, uh, wasn't, in, wasn't important. in Throat Puncher, uh, Laith, uh, he is wanting to uh, put together some streaming shows, maybe some like multi-band lineup, like, you know, find some maybe large space or maybe an outdoor type space and do some some virtual shows and uh i told him i'd be on board to uh to do the sound for that and maybe you know sound and or video however many people are helping out we could divide some of that work but i want to start putting this stuff to use um you know if we're not going to be doing in-person live shows i'd like to start you know doing something with them i've got all these microphones just weighing down my uh, house (laughs) <laughs> have you reached out to any bands yet? Do you have anybody on a short list? For- no, I, ha- I haven't reached out to anybody yet. I'm just kind of, I do have a, a list of, um, of bands, you know, from previous times, like people who've done radio sessions, just people I know who are in bands, local uh, Tampa Bay people. And um, I'll start reaching out to them pretty soon. Yeah. Yeah. Sick. Sick. Very I sick. I love it. I love it. Um, the other exciting thing I did this week is I attempted to repair a camera lens last night. Uh, I've, I've got this, uh, this camera lens that for like a year or more, like at some point the autofocus broke on it. So it still works as a manual lens, but like you can't autofocus. So I was like, you know what? I'm pretty much like a master engineer at this point. Why don't I crack that bad boy open and start (laughs) fucking around with it? And um, it is uh, maddening to work on things of that scale. Like the wires are so tiny. Everything's so small. (laughs) I was able to get everything apart. I was able to pull out the motor. It was basically all based on watching a couple of YouTube videos of people who did similar things. I was able to free up the motor, which seemed to be all stuck up. But then... Every time I removed something, like I detached a wire because the wires are so tiny and so delicate. So then I have to go back in and solder it. And it's so tiny and so difficult to solder. Like the soldering, my soldering gun seems like, you know, it's like uh, trying to use a a, cannon. uh, Yeah. It's like trying to use a a basketball to play ping pong, Um, (laughs) uh, ping pong. And I don't know. um, uh, I, I don't know. Uh, I I don't have the right tools to work on something that small. And and at a certain point I had snapped the wire and resoldered it so many times that it was now too short to reach where it was supposed to. So I had to (laughs) use some other wire that I had for like guitar pedals. And it was like monstrous. It was, it was like um, using a a basketball to play ping pong. Uh, It was crazy. So I had to um, uh, eventually I got everything back together. Everything was assembled perfectly. It's, um, it, it now, instead of not functioning at all, it now makes a whining noise while not functioning. So it's like a wah wah pedal now. Yeah, now it's got like guitar stuff in it. Exactly. Now I uh, <laughs> now run that shit through a delay. You know what I'm saying? Space it out. And um, well, I was very proud of myself for being able to put it back together. Um, I, I was able to get power to the motor at least, so now it's making a noise. But obviously, it's still not working correctly. But uh, to me, 
it was a great victory uh, just to be able to uh, crack it open and not destroy it completely. So that was a, that was a, nice. it gave me something to do. Thank Christ. We commend you for your efforts. Thank you very much. Um, the, uh, I was actually, I wrote down cause I started watching it, but then I didn't even finish it. I watched a movie called, uh, well, documentary It's only about an mm-hmm. hour long. I only watched like the first 20 minutes of it called can a computer write a hit musical <laughs> as it's all about whether, uh, well, it's all about whether a computer can write a hit musical. You might guess. <laughs> Right there, there's all those like things now you see where uh, they're they're like AI, they're having AI like write a television show or write a play or something based. On, it'll they'll just like put a bunch of scripts into it and have it and have an AI to like kick and like they're actually really funny. I mean they're not like good, but reading them is really fun. Yeah, they they did a similar thing. They they processed a bunch of data and they figured out you know the uh, ideal hit they're looking for a hit something that will be commercially right. successful so it needs to have a love story in it it needs to take place in the past they determined the 80s was the most advantageous uh, financially um, it needs to have a female protagonist it needs to involve a death it needs to have a happy ending and needs to include a variety of musical genres uh, and then they started spitting out different premises and the premises were all kind of in the format of a lonesome plumber finds a magic hat that enables him to communicate with the dead or something like that. I like Mario. Super Mario. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> just, just I guess that's kind of what he done. does. Super Mario the musical. Maybe that's what it ends up being. Again, I only saw the first 20 minutes, so it could be that, that it, oh, but he, oh, but I guess the plumber would have to be a lady. So it would be princess Toadstool. Was that, what was her name? Uh, Peach. Princess Later Peach. Name. Peach. Has there she's ever been a, a princess plumber. toadstool? Yeah, she's not a plumber. She's princess of the toadstool kingdom? Maybe that's what I'm thinking. But yeah, she's not a plumber. I mean, she just knows a plumber. I mean, we all know a plumber. Oh, it doesn't like make us plumbers. <laughs> I knew, like, when I was reading through one of those scripts, like, it told, they told us, like, write a cop show. And even though it's just kind of like a garble of nonsense, you can still tell it it's it's picking up tropes or like it know there's certain things that like that are common between everything that it's processed and it's it's it, it on some level it kind of makes sense like i think it's funny they all talk about like i am i am this close to retirement i i want to say every line in a computer voice i uh, lose cannon i do not follow the rules things like that put your gun badge here <laughs> insert them into my drawer <laughs> the drawer is on the robot it's not just in the desk yeah, of the yeah, supervisor yeah. It's just in its chest cavity <laughs> put them in my chest cavity um yeah so that's about it with yeah. me oh i did want to um uh, give quick shouts out um let me name some names i want uh, these are people who uh who have supported us so far with uh with uh, ordering some stickers from us you can always send a, a message to us, us at the GNC show.com. If you want some stickers and donations are um, optional. If you want to send us some, you can always send uh, to PayPal at uh, it's a, a underscore S T H I L L like St. Hill at yahoo.com or Venmo at Alistair hyphen S T H I L L. And um We've uh, we've almost recouped the the cost of uh, of the production of these uh, goddamn stickers, but uh, Eric Collins, uh, Mister ENC, uh, Amanda X X uh, from Airwave, Emily, um, uh, I just know her as Emil's person from uh, Facebook, uh, Alex Neto, Cody Wilson from the band Cody, Amanda Molinaro from Nervous Girls, uh, Sunny Acevedo. Uh, from Mojo Books and Records, George Alexander, the uh, uh, celloman, cello player, uh, John Nowicki from Holy Terror, Greg Shear, Rita Donahoe Simmons, Ann Mansfield from uh, Nervous Girls, Carly Bradshaw, who you you know, I don't know who that know. is, you know, um, I know, Jared Simpson um, from Between Bluffs, and uh, Billy Mays the Third. Uh, infinite third they're all uh, they've all been very supportive of the show um, providing donations and such and I want to uh, thank them very much for their uh, patronage yes thank you I have a question Uh, in the old format of the show we used to offer premiums like you know nickname you said Alex Neto 
Oh, so, we're talking about Wolf so Pistol. Do, so, do previous owners of nicknames are they grandfathered into the new platform? Do, are we referring to them by? Should we refer to him as Wolf Pistol? He has referred and, to himself as Wolf Pistol, and I'm perfectly happy to let that live on. Okay. We and used it to like those expired. We used like, to say in the past that they expired <laughs> so that we could trick people into uh, giving us more money <laughs> the, the next quarter uh, at WMNF. Yeah, these are these are legacy fans, like legacy members. Yeah, you know, we'll, yeah. we should treat them a little bit of respect. We don't. Maybe. We don't have any quotas to meet right now. Like there's no exactly. there's no it's big true. WMNF breathing down our neck, <laughs> yeah. asking for their cut. <laughs> Finally, the corporate was, overlords have been shrugged off. What do you say, Jeff? That's Jeffrey? right. Oh, no, that was Mike Overly's Instagram handle was Wolf Pistol. He, he's got to cut that No, out. it wasn't Wolf Pistol, See, was it? Cease and desist. Yeah, I just looked it up. Really? Then he stole it. Yeah. Anyway. That's hmm. I, anyways, I, only, I only remember one other Rick. nickname, and that was Sorry, for our friend Renee. Blood Monet. Blood Monet, yeah. Yeah. I, I bought some of her artwork uh, like a couple months ago, and she sent me a thank you note and some stickers and stuff and signed it, Blood Monet. All right. Really, I got, I've got like a little keepsake. It's awesome. Physical you get some evidence. birds? Were they bird images? No, they were like octopus images, like, the, like some like uh, Lovecraftian Cthulhu kind of uh, warped, warped beast kind of looking things. She did that. Describe it. It's octopusy. <laughs> Ish. The... <Octopus-ish. laughs> so do you guys want to seven movie? Do you want to? Uh, do you guys want to do a little bit of trivia? Sure. Let's do it. Sure. <laughs> All right. Oh boy, it's time for every human's favorite question and answer fun game. I already knew that a long time ago. With your host, Alice the Saint Hill. Very loud in my headphones. Uh, that's right. It's time for your favorite question and answer fun game. Answer the question. Don't make jokes. Just answer it. With me, Alistair St. Hill. The topic of tonight's quiz, this 10-question quiz, musical instruments. I'll be giving you information about musical instruments, and you'll be naming the instrument for me. I believe there's only one question for which I need you to have a pen and paper to write down and possibly get as many as three points. All the other questions will just be chiming in using your name as the buzzer. Let's go ahead and get started. This stringed instrument produces sound by a hand crank turned rosined wheel rubbing against the string sounding much like a violin bow. It's a stringed instrument that's played with a hand cranked wheel. Corin? Core and go. Concertina. Go! Oh! No, of course not, Corn. Come on. What's the guess? Famously named. Well, I guess I can't give any hints at this point because that wouldn't be fair Jared. to Corin, who stepped out when no other man would. Thank you. I have no idea. I will say it was it was name checked in a song by Donovan. Jared. Well, this for no points, Jared. No, for no points. Oh, is it a Glockenspiel? Damn it, it ain't right. I don't no, it's know what not. Glockenspiel is. <laughs> I don't need Correct I don't answer. Know what a hurdy gurdy. <laughs> hurdy gurdy. Come on, you guys know the hurdy gurdy, right? I've heard you say it. Heard of it. <laughs> I've heard he gird of it. He won't right. shut up about it. <laughs> <laughs> Question two. This instrument consists of a pair of concave shells joined on one edge by a string. They're held in the hand and used to produce clicks for rhythmic accents or ripping and rattling sound consisting of a rapid series of clicks. Hand Jared. clickers. You say Jared? I say go. Castanets. Castanets big time. Ooh, nice. Boom. Jared out to a quick lead. One to zero to zero. Question three. This Japanese stringed musical instrument is the national instrument of its country, Japan. Jared. Jared, go. The Koto. Yeah, yeah! Jared killing it. The Koto. Oh, K-O-T-O. No. We've got a my Japan time, file. My time in a middle school band has not has not helped so far. You didn't play no. the Koto? No, no, it was not in the, the orchestra. <laughs> You're not a stinky otaku like Jared? Yeah. My wee brutes are showing. <laughs> Question four. This keyboard instrument produces sound 
by driving pressurized air through cylinders of various lengths. Jared. Some examples are among the largest instruments in the world. Jared, go ahead. Pipe organ? Yeah! That's right. It's a pipe organ. Yeah. Are, are, are you guys getting all that. the audio? Yeah. <laughs> J- Jotham, Corin, are you, are you no. muted? Okay. Listen, there's other <laughs> instruments that use air and keys. I was waiting for you to finish the question. He just happened to say the only one he knew, which happened to be right. So? <laughs> Gotta be aggressive with it. Call it out if you know it, or take a guess. I don't know. Could have, could have been a bunch of things that could I'm not been. gonna name. <laughs> That's a chance I took. I could have been wrong. <laughs> I realized I maybe made a mistake when he kept talking <laughs> after he said it's keys never, and pipes. Never a good sign. <laughs> Question five. This cylindrical Australian instrument. Corin. Corin, go. <laughs> Didgeridoo. Yeah. That could have been anything. There's so many tubed mouth. Australian Sith instruments. Lord. <laughs> he didgeridid it. <laughs> Ooh, called him a Sith Lord. Darth Organ. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Question six. Mm-hmm. This Greek member of the loot family has a round body with a flat top and a long neck with a fretted fingerboard. It has steel strings and is played with a plectrum producing a sharp metallic sound. Jared. Jared, go. A liar. You're a liar. <laughs> Corin. Corin, go. Zither? Go! Oh, oh Corin. Jotham. I, I got nothing. Wide open goal. Come on. It's a Greek lute. Come on. Just think of a Gre- the Greekest, Greek. the Greekest sounding instrument you can think of. Uh, I just, now I'm just thinking of gyros, flaming I know. cheese. I, I knew he was going to say something about food. That seems We prejudiced. all thought about it. Yeah. <laughs> the answer is the bazooki. Come on. Oh, you can get one of those Never at that place that. BJ's. Okay. No, no. It's called the bazooki. It's a pizza and a cookie. Bazooki. <laughs> it's pretty funny. <laughs> that's what, that's what, it's the real thing <laughs> Jared, right, whatever. Jared's having fun with this but it's good it's good <laughs> question 7 this company produced the first commercial synthesizer in 1964 Jotham Jotham go Moog yeah! that's correct Moog synthesizer company for this question I'm going to need everyone to write down their answer can get up to three points for this one. Name the instruments that make up a traditional string quartet. What instruments are in a traditional string quartet? How traditional? You have to write them down. Pretty traditional. <laughs> That's the answer. Pretty traditional. <laughs> and don't get don't get hung up on that quartet. Quartet ha- has connotations of a particular number. Don't get hung up on that. Just think about how many, which instruments are in a traditional string quartet. Oh. Oh. Is everybody ready? <laughs> sure. Jared. Uh, sh- Jared, uh, what uh, no, what did you write down there, bud? I wrote v- violin, viola, and cello, and cello. Oh. That is, we well, got three right. Uh, what? Corin, go ahead. What do you have in there? I was too busy making dumb comments i said violin and cello okay you got two right there jotham lay it on me what'd you write down is it something some dumb joke no No. violin cello and bass okay you got two right there violin viola and cello typically there are two violins of one viola and one cello in there there's no way to get four right three is the most that you get right and jared has done it he's winning six to three to three i don't want to say anything about the the chances yeah he's coming for you the uh the chances (laughs) that uh uh, jotham and corin have uh to win but but they're not good they're not great (laughs) question nine (laughs) this brass instrument named for a famous american band leader is known as a marching tuba jotham jotham go Sousaphone. Yeah, yeah! That's right. Not named for Dr. Seuss, but named for John Philip Sousa. <laughs> All that blundery hoopla. 
Uh, Let's all drink in that sound. Is that <laughs> Question 10, final question. This tuned percussion instrument is made of wooden blocks arranged in the layout of a piano keyboard stru- struck by mallets. C- Jotham, Gotham. Ooh, now I'm questioning it. Uh, marimba or Xyl? No! Marimba. Marimba. <laughs> Not marimba. Does anyone else have a... Xylophone. Have a- <laughs> Does anyone else have a have, want to chime Jared. in, Jared? Xylophone. That's correct. Xylophone. <laughs> Damn it. And that's it. Jared wins it. Seven to four to three. Jotham coming in second, which which is what we call a Jotham win. <laughs> <laughs> Except last week. Yo, we got yeah, that last week. Phone, though. Yeah, you trounced. Yes, yeah, pulling that sousaphone out from nowhere. <laughs> Can't believe none of you appreciate the hurdy gurdy. All right, guys. Greek loot. Bazooki. (laughs) 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 Gazoonite. All right. We are going to take a break in this um, first break. We're going to hear some music. We're going to hear some Thousand Air. You you called that in a song called Fine out of Atlanta. Yeah. uh, Andrew Wiggins. He also makes really cool pedals. So if you dig the sound you're hearing, um, Moreland Magnetics on Instagram. Yeah, I enjoy looking at uh, at his uh, posts of his electronic makery. Going to hear some Bit Brigade with Hyrule Castle from their re-recording of their Legend of Zelda album. Going to hear some Hum with Cloud City from their new album Inlets. Some Infinite Eights, a song called Mind for Matter, and Ninehorn with Lil Wag. That's coming up. Uh, We will be back after that with some news.
Hello, hello, hello. You're listening to Grand National Championships on the internet. We're back. And if I didn't know any better, I would think that it was just about time for... News. Tonight, we are going over to Mississippi. A viral design being proposed as a new state flag for Mississippi originated as a joke and was only included in a list of finalists due to a typo, according to officials. So, just so you guys know, it is a mosquito flag. Can you see that? Cool. Mosquito yeah. with a, a ring of stars? Yes. So, um, they're currently narrowing down the options to replace its current flag after lawmakers voted to remove the Confederate flag, which is great. Um, they revealed the finalists, and it turns out that this was a typo, but it still made it on. Um, so, uh, Thomas Rossetti told the Clarion Ledger that he designed and submitted the mosquito flag as a joke on a coworker who didn't want the flag changed. And then it turns out at the end of the article that dreams were dashed on Tuesday when the MDAH, which is the Mississippi Department of Archives and History, clarified that the flag was not meant to be a finalist. So it won't actually make it on the ballot. I always assume that if anything is put up to some kind of public vote, like it's going to get 4chan and like like it's when they sent it's like when they sent a pit bull to alaska to perform at walmart <laughs> it's just anything that's given to the people is going to turn out to be like some secretly racist thing yeah. uh, i feel like the mosquito is there is some kind of weird racist symbol i just don't trust anything anymore <laughs> i just wish everything they, would just stop they did this with a there was a boat naming boat they face. mentioned face. that in, in this yeah. article yeah it's basically the same thing so yeah, I, I, if that happened, just the mosquito would just become a racist symbol, right? I mean, is that that like, guess, how it would be yeah, done? Yeah, basically, I, I kind of I like the flag. It's very nice until it becomes racist. <laughs> Everything's well, nice if, until if it, it becomes if racist. It was, yeah, if it wasn't racist, I would like the flag. If it is racist, I don't like the flag. Here's a spoiler. <laughs> spoiler. It's in Mississippi. It's racist. <laughs> Chances are. Chances are. I'm sure there are lots of nice pockets in Mississippi of good, uh, well-intentioned people. Jared doubts me. <laughs> They've got to be there. I'm, sh I'm sure of it. I, be I believe in the goodness of tiny percentages of populations. You did say nice pockets, and all I could think of was like a southerner with his hand in his like. Uh, I do declare. <laughs> yeah, I, it's like, I think there's nice pockets there, too. Yeah, that sounds awesome. <laughs> it's a seersucker suit. Yeah, <laughs> satin <Cold> line. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, Corin, what's in the news? Oh boy, uh, oh one step closer to bomb sniffing cyborg locusts. And I'm about to break. <laughs> <laughs> right. If if you want to enhance a locust to be a bomb sniffing bug, there's a few technical challenges that need solving before sending it into the field. Is there a way to direct locusts? to tell it where to go and what to sniff. Uh, because Locust can't speak, is there a way to read the brain of these cyborg bugs to know where what they're smelling? Uh, can Locust even smell explosives? Yes and yes to the first two questions. Previous research from University of Washington has demonstrated both ability to control the Locust and the ability to read their brains, so to speak, to discern what it is they're smelling. And now, thanks to new research from McKelvey School of Engineering, the third question has been settled. Again, yes. In a pre-proof published uh, online on August 6th in the Journal of Biosensors and Bioelectronics that's X. A, that's a good journal. Dude, Journal of Biosensors and Bioelectronics colon X. That's the name of the journal. Uh, cool. Researchers show that they were able to hijack a locust olfactory system to both detect and discriminate <laughs> between <laughs> different explosive scents, all within a few hundred milliseconds of exposure. I have a question. Go for it. I'm obviously so, an expert. So are they saying that locusts have a particular proclivity towards these towards discrimination uh, of, of scents? <laughs> So uh, what I'm saying is, is it absolutely essential that they have the remote controlled locust as part of this? Or can they just do they have sensors that work uh, as, you know, to simulate olfactory systems 
like could they could they just have a robot that smells it or are they really getting off on uh hijacking a locust brain yeah my question back to you is why not locusts why not locusts? my question is could we have mosquitoes that sniff out racists <laughs> i think we <laughs> already do is, they're on the flag how long until they train the locusts to sniff out blood <laughs> as well, always mosquitoes already do that are like our insides <laughs> boring through the skin <laughs> yeah that'd be a good well, name for thanks. this podcast swarming insects is like a big nightmare of mine like that's just crazy and terrible swarming so, insects well, and plague. this is this, this yeah but this jared sounds like the next step like but jared to, you have to understand these aren't insects these are little tiny robot monsters so just imagine <laughs> that the whole swarm is just robots that want to kill you not locusts that want to kill you C- correction they're cyborgs so they're half uh, half swarming insect, half okay. robot. So I meant no disrespect. Went out of the knife to get like a cybernetic implant. Put yeah. In. Yes. So there's like, so how? It like <laughs> wakes up and it's all like, <laughs> how did I? What do I do with this strange strength of mine? Yeah, it's like now it's like extra super duper strong. It wakes up. They all wake up individually. Like, like it pulls the skin off and there's a robot <laughs> locust arm underneath it. And he pulls does this. down its sunglasses and red yeah. eyes. Yeah. Red eyes, that's right. Double pumps the shotgun. Totally. So, like in uh, in T2. Just twirl pumps it. it. Twirl pumps. Yeah. I said twirl double. Pump, thank you. Double never happened. <laughs> we'll use the Cyborg standard locus. standard term, twirl pump. Um, <laughs> so, again, you, uh, everyone is very jazzed about using the locusts for this. There's no other way that they could just do it directly <laughs> using robotic technology. If I had read the entire journal article from biosensors and bioelectronics x perhaps i could answer this question about why locusts but i cannot because i am not an x scientist so i guess we'll just have to assume that locusts have a unique uh aptitude uh for sniffing out racists was it (laughs) okay so um jared what's in the news Speaking of other racist stuff, there are things that oh, are racist that oh, might not cool, used to be cool. or something. Um, so Good Humor has reached out to yes. uh, Riza of the Wu-Tang Clan uh, to create a new universal, universally used and adopted ice cream jingle because uh, the the very familiar tune that everybody knows, Turkey in the Straw, that you know usually plays out of a ice cream truck uh has been determined that's to it be, right? you know yeah. Yeah, from old minstrel shows and has this very you know negative connotation in history so good humor and rizza have teamed up and he's created a new uh ice cream jingle and they're calling on all ice cream truck drivers everywhere to abandon the old one and adopt it and they're providing it for free to all music boxes i guess the, like public ice cream truck music boxes is this where Rad. I drop it? This yeah. is where you drop it. have to hear it hear it 50 times to associate it with ice cream yeah i know right now that's it just the right, that's the idea it I just mean, sounds like, like something yeah. that quads out gently and delightfully <laughs> yeah so it's gonna be everywhere soon so it's listen great. for your and if uh you hear somebody's playing turkey in the straw report them to the authorities because it's racist the port authority. i never knew that was the name of the song I, w- I i don't know what i thought it was called but you know what? That comes up under the uh, segment, the kind of you know aborted segment that we uh, discussed a few weeks ago, of songs who whose melody and tune you recognize, but you don't know the name of. Yes. Has anyone right. else come up with any others besides Turkey in the Straw lately? No, I like to ha- let them happen organically. Okay, I feel like no, that. But, but I did watch the the last dance after you talked about it. Oh, so yeah. you know all about that Alan Parsons project, huh? Serious. Mm-hmm. And you know what? <laughs> Completely unrelated, 
my partner in all things, Mandy Miner, was listening to to Alan Parsons' project over our home hi-fi system uh, just uh, last week, and uh, Sirius came up, and I was like, "Oh my God, you, you like the Chicago Bulls too?" And um, <laughs> so uh, we we're listening to a few different Alan Parsons' project songs. I have absolutely no knowledge of Alan Parsons' project whatsoever. Uh-huh. Um, I just saw that granddaddy song that's kind of about him. Yeah, uh, walking in an Alan Parsons, Alan Parsons Parsons in a winter wonderland. Winter wonderland, yeah. yeah. Add that to your list, Jotham. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Oh, (laughs) came full circle. How about Uh, that? uh, Oh my God, that's the closest this show has ever come to making sense, (laughs) beginning to end. All right, so that's pretty much the news. All right, uh, uh, uh. Lower left, Corin to me, lower left could be anywhere for you guys. Corin's in the lower yeah. left. Um, you had an album slash artist slash song uh, that you wanted to uh, check in on with a review, right? Correct. Uh, this is, I mean, the artist is a collaboration. Let me start over. I'm not good at talking. The project is called Marlowe, and it's a collaboration between two artists, Solomon Brigham, who is an MC, and uh, LaRange, who is a, uh, a DJ. And their second album just came out last week. It's called Marlowe 2. The first one was just called Marlowe. Um, and LaRange is, uh, he's Seattle based now, or at least he's out of a, uh, a, a record label that's out of Seattle, but he was from the East Coast. They were both originally from North Carolina. Uh, LaRange has worked with Cool Keith, Mr. Lift, Jeremiah J. Um, he's got like a like an old school style kind of like um, MF Doom or Mad Lib. Uh, Pitchfork called him a loop digger, hmm. so he's got some cred there. Was uh, he as, was he digging uh, records out of his auntie's closet back in the day before he even <laughs> knew that he could make a profit off it? I believe so. I think that was about LaRange, yeah. Okay. Uh, Solomon Brigham is, uh, I mean, essentially he was an unknown MC. He's got like a band camp, but before this, he, he had never really blown up at all. Uh, after their original uh, 2018 album, they've gotten some press. Uh, they haven't gotten a lot of it. They didn't get huge uh, reviews. It wasn't widely released in any way. It didn't get much attention, but like the 2018 marlo album that's the new one that's marlo 2 that you're seeing on the on the video screen what do you uh, think the third one's going to be called that's a great question uh, <laughs> i will i'll put that out and see if they have any uh, see if solemn has any answers for me um that 2018 album was was killer like the, the whole way through there's just track after track of like instant classics from the from the time it starts like you can tell that this guy is an incredible MC. Like the first real track on that is uh, is a song that has no no hooks, no no change in it. It's just one straight verse throughout the whole thing, and it's like two and a half minutes, and it's incredible. Playing with they, playing with the structures and the forms, it sounds like. Correct. Yeah, and it's great. And um, and then Marlo Two just came out, like I said last week. Um, I think it is. I think it's great. I don't think it's as good as the first one, but that was, I know. They, in some ways, like, they've just gone more uh, streamlined. It sounds a little more mature. It kind of sounds a little more commercial. Like, the first one was a little uh, little more avant-garde. Like, they had they had some really weird, they had some weird tracks in there. Um, this one is it, still incredible. It just doesn't have as many, it doesn't have as high a hit rate as... Uh, as the 2018 one. You're talking about a banger ratio? Banger ratio, yeah. West uh, slaps. That's also how I, you know, navigate the uh, nude beach. The banger, banger ratio. ratios. <laughs> uh, so I wanted to, well, there's a few tracks I wanted to mention. Uh, Future Power Sources and Later With It are a couple favorites, but the one that I wanted to listen to is called OG Funk Rock. And this is with an, uh, there's another artist on there called afro that's also featured on the song but what time did you want me to fade that in that is a a fantastic you say about a minute in or something let me let me pull up the exact because i want to give it 
drop it in at 135 and give it about 40 seconds and you'll you'll get to hear a lot of what a solemn brigham can do and then you can see why uh larange is compared to mf doom in that as well is this the prophecy and I Just get my profit off the top We took rap and made it pop On the side we from the lot There's plenty ways to get you side Quit to spot you with the light But this is one I never swap I get stronger out of spite No need to know the chips I got Keep them on the move the plot Rush down for the bust down Came in with the rough sound Young leg kicking dust now Show leg getting fussed out Home base that's a tough crowd Same names in a dust pal Be the same one throwing trust out Rain drop with the fuss bow Same doubt looking sus now I see it all now See me in the spot, ain't tryna get no bad riddance I don't need the spot, just want the light that goes with it Told me not to fall in with the light, there's no finish Ever since they threw me in the pot, said go with it See me in the spot, ain't tryna get no bad riddance I don't need the spot, just want the light that goes with it Told me not to fall in with the light, there's no finish Ever since they... OG Funk Rock by Marlo Yeah, off of Fully Marlo endorsed too. by Corin, although he says higher banger ratio on the uh, the debut LP. Get both, listen to both, you're gonna love them. As soon as that sample comes in, I just think MF Doom. I feel, oh, like, the... jo- I feel like Jotham's just, I never think Jotham's being serious. Is it just because of, is it just cause of your yeah, face? I, it's my <laughs> face. I get that a lot too. I'll say something Thanks, really guys. serious and people just laugh like I'm, like I'm a fucking joke. <laughs> what am I a clown to what you? What am I a clown to you? <laughs> Thanks, that's been my mo- movie review. <laughs> cool. No, <laughs> my no, mer- no, no, mer- no cheese review. this week, but one, mo- one movie yeah, by Marlo. Yeah, you, for God's sakes. <laughs> He's all out of sorts. My cheese banger ratio is down. Oh, don't want that, brother. Um, all right, guys, let's check in um, on some voicemails we did uh we did get uh we got one voicemail to share this week um this is this is i'll just let you know this is cody um from the band king complex we heard some music from them last week that's what he's referencing uh in this uh this voicemail that i'm about to play hello 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 alistair this is cody doss uh I saw you played our shit the other night. That was super fucking nice of you. Shit. And, uh, on, on a hold, hold on a second. We can do that. <laughs> yeah, let me uh, let me run that back, and just so we can hear all the filth mouth that uh, <laughs> that Cody had to share with us. Cody, uh, Cody, you know what? Your music is better than to be referred to as our shit. Come on, Cody. All right. Hello, 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 Alistair. This is Cody Doc. That's you. Uh, I saw you played our shit the other night. That was super fucking nice of you. And uh, I wanted to leave a message and tell you some stuff I've been finding cool. Uh, I just got into the Daniel Johnston stuff. It's new for me. You probably know about it. Uh, Yip Jump Music. That album's fucking nuts. Uh, so that's been really cool. Um, Kendrick Lamar, Untitled Unmastered. I have not been able to put down for a few years now. I think he's, he's one of the few people really <clears throat> speaking truth in music. It's a really refreshing thing to hear. Uh, for me, at least. And, uh, Tennyson. I don't know if you've listened to Tennyson much, but they have crazy shit. <laughs> Just featured music to me. Uh, yeah, I saw you. I saw your Facebook post, so here I am. Calm. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> have a good one. Nice. Thank you very much, Cody. We appreciate that. Uh, big fan of uh, King Complex. Always happy to play their shit on the podcast come on cody it was super fucking nice it was super fucking nice of us um and i love tennyson um their saw an old song of theirs i mean it seems very old now it's from 2015 uh a song called like what is one of my uh all-time favorite songs uh full stop it's got uh, let me just play like 30 seconds of it here because it's got uh, there's just something about um the the harmony synth line that plays at the end of this little thing that is just um inconceivable to me i just uh, don't know how a brain comes up with this type of harmony is this thing here 
that's that's my favorite part of that Tennyson song. Sweet. Big fan that's of that awesome. little. That's, that's, uh, that's pretty amazing. Are they? Uh, are all the tracks instrumental? No, my favorite tracks are the instrumental ones. They do some vocal tracks, and I don't quite feel them as much. They don't quite move me like the instrumental ones. Um, How? They're a duo. Um, and I think that there's a lady who plays drums and a gentleman who plays keys and does. Uh, I think he he does the vocals primarily. I don't know everything they've done, but uh, yeah, I love Tennyson. So uh, I'm on the same. Uh, same page as you, Cody. I do. And I also like that uh, Cody uh, mentioned an album that he can't put down for years. <laughs> what have you been listening to lately? Well, I can't stop listening to the Kendrick Lamar album for about three years. <laughs> I love those music reviews. Yeah, that's pretty solid. Um, well, guys, I don't know how much uh, how much more on the agenda we have. Is there anything else that anyone wanted to bring to the table? No, sir. No, sir. You brought it. I uh, do want to mention, uh, it looks like, based on uh, social media surveillance, that uh, Nervous Girls are recording some uh, some new material, first stuff that they're putting out with their uh, full uh, new lineup. I say full because now they've got a bass player. I, um, uh, I have a secret uh, judgment for all bands that don't have bass players. Um, I don't know why. There's just, I, I just, you know, you know me. I love that low end. Um, and Cody, a band, uh, that we played some music from, from their, uh, from their new LP, they are prepping some live shows, some streaming shows that they're going to be doing again, based on social media surveillance. It looks like they have been, uh, practicing socially distanced and masked and, um, are going to be, uh, doing some stuff late in August, early in September. So that's exciting to look forward to. Um, in the the time between now and the next show, I'm going to find out if a computer really can write a hit musical. Uh, do you guys have anything uh, anything planned uh, coming up? I guess uh, I forgot. I'm not supposed to ask questions to three people at once, especially with Zoom lag. I want to go scalloping. Was your brother just scalloping? That's a real f- family thing for you guys. We were talking about going t- tonight. We were talking about it because he couldn't make it to the springs, so. And gonna you make couldn't make it, it to the scalloping. And I couldn't make it to the scalloping. I've got a brand new pair of scallop shakes, <laughs> and you've got a brand new kayak, right? <laughs> Corin, what do you plan to do? Just get buck naked in the sand? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, tomorrow I have punch class, and then I'm going to work <laughs> all weekend. It's a bummer, but that's it. And Jared... Are you just gonna uh, just wait for the technology to arrive at the at the point that you require for your gaming system? Yes. <laughs> um, and I'm putting together a computer, and I'm probably going to practice with my band. At some I'm his point. band. <laughs> uh, and that's about it, probably. He's probably gonna play some video games with me too. Maybe. Oh, and at some point we were talking about doing <laughs> what? Fine, whatever. <laughs> At some point, we were talking about doing a a session of. Oh, you know what? We never talked about Dungeons and Dragons. Let's. Yeah. Can we just talk about that right quick? Qu- quick overview. <laughs> we are. We are. I don't know. We're all feeling some kind of uh, urge to play Dungeons and Dragons. I don't know if I'm, I could speak for urge. Jotham. I feel like Jotham yeah. is the least likely um, among us to be like, "Ooh, I really want to roll some dice." No, no, no. I'm excited about this, and if. Uh, I, w- I wouldn't have guessed that I would be, but like if you asked me five years ago, I would not have been, but I, I really am now. And I was talking to my brother about it, and he's like, whoa, that's a good group of people to do that with. So yeah. my brother gave it the stamp of approval. So Fully endorsed. It's got to be good. Yeah, right. So we, yeah, we, we found a, a, a DM outside of our group. We had to, we had to find someone who was maybe a little more capable of, of the commitment <laughs> than we are. Uh, and so we're going to start like next week, we're going to have a session where we're, we're going to do some character creation and, uh, you know, have a little session zero, they call it, you know? So what are you guys leaning as far as like your race and class and stuff? I would like to point out that what I, what I said in the group text that we were having is that I feel like in real life, Jared is our warrior. (laughs) Corin is our healer. 
I'm a magic user and Jotham is a sneaky person. Now, I don't know <laughs> if that is something that will translate into the game, but that's how I identify us as, as human people. How, how do you guys feel about that, Corn? Look at your face. What are you thinking about? Uh, I mean, I volunteered to be healer person because nobody else wants to do it. And I know the party is probably going to need someone to. Yeah, I feel like that is something that someone is saddled with. And I'd be happy yeah. to take that on if you want me to. I have less no, experience no, gaming I, than you do. I want you to have fun your first time. I want you to be free. So what you're saying yourself. is what you're going to do is not fun. <laughs> oh, no, it'll be fun. It'll be fun because I... Full disclosure, I already did my character creation. <laughs> <laughs> Same. It's weird how yeah. you got all 18s. No, no, no. You just, there's an online tool. It doesn't let you cheat too much. You're a fucking uh, online tool. I am. <laughs> I no doubt. Uh, so I picked a Furbolg as my uh, race. Okay. And uh, my, what? It's, He's quitting. I was just He's being funny. Um, the Furbolg? Furbolg. Bulga. Good. What is that? Yeah, for Bolg. It's like uh, they're they're like a forest dwelling race of uh, fairly large creatures, uh, usually druidic, sometimes uh, cleric y. Kind of furry, right? Fur Bolg. Or yeah, not necessarily. Be, not not furry. necessarily furry, but yeah, just like seven, seven or eight feet tall, like 200 pounds, kind of lanky, uh, huh. real like low key, down to earth earthy earth tones wears yeah. a lot of brown sweaters exactly uh so i'm gonna do that as a cleric probably of life domain uh so i can heal y'all if, if you get fucked up, <laughs> get fucked Qu up. quieter and quieter <laughs> um well I, I i i thank you for your volunteering to to heal us all heal the world make yeah. it a better place for you and for me so corn do you like role play like crazy do you do you get into the role play do so you do this voices? is the thing jared makes fun Please. of his other dungeons and dragons group when they role play are you i don't do make them? fun of them i think mm. it's great i don't <laughs> nobody yeah. does I mean, sometimes they try to <laughs> <laughs> but they can't do it over all my jabs and jests and japes <laughs> But when Corin uh, comes in, is he going to be all like, mm, I, <laughs> oh no, you're suffering from an arrow wound. He's if, doing some furball voice. If any voice. one of us was going to do that, it would be me, and I'm not ashamed to say that. I would be the first one to do it. Are you and, ashamed to say what he just said in that voice? I don't know if I can do that voice. <laughs> well, I am a trained actor. I would have come in and you. Just keep this in mind. Keep this in mind. This is a thing that we're going to have to Wait, do. Wait, did you just play a recording of me back? <laughs> yeah. Because I, I heard myself again. It was like there were two of me. I'm that good. Uh, so you're going to have to deal maybe with me doing voices. Especially if I turn off my camera we're, while we're, we're playing all have to do, We're all going to have to commit to the voices. No, we're not committing to voices. I'm not. <laughs> Why? In fact, I was thinking of even naming my player Alistair. And I was going to just, I was just going to be just, I'm like, there's no voice. There's no nothing. Like, my character is essentially me. That, but then it's hard because we have to talk in game and we have to talk out of game. There's, there's such no metagaming. No metagaming. Yeah, no metagaming. Yeah. Right. That's when right. you, you when you use knowledge that the player has as a character. Yeah. I understand that, but I mean, I'll just you know I'll hold up I'll hold up the, a blue chip <laughs> when I'm being me, and I'll hold up a red chip when I'm being <laughs> Alistair, the in traditional fucking warlock in dragons fashion. <laughs> yeah. Hold up the red chips. pill and blue pill. <laughs> oh come on, Joe. Jotham, so what type of character are you thinking about? We already know that J Jared wants to be like some kind of like um, super Half strong, yeah, super strong barbarian man who carries like a giant axe. Because it's easy to like just hit things and just be the guy that hits things and to be the guy that takes the damage. That's what I like. Tank. I like, I like yeah, just be being kind of a, a force of nature and just big and dumb. Jared, knock down door. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm the tool, I'm the implement that you send off to go kill the thing, and, and uh, I don't really have to deal with the baron of the house or whatever, or whoever we're talking to. <laughs> I don't have to make the deal. That's I can be, be imposing and threatening. That's going to be Corin talking in those voices. So, Jotham, yeah, what are you thinking about? 
I was looking at a tiefling, right? Okay. That, that's as yeah. far as I got. You um, just like the word? Well, it's like a half demon, half human. It is. Yeah. The world yeah. is racist against them. That's right. The world's Aren't racist they? against them? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You have to deal with that he prejudice. Persecuted. Yeah. Everywhere mm. we go, we were like, we don't trust y'all because we, y'all, you got that tiefling. But mm. if you are going to be sneaky boy, uh, may I suggest a rogue? They're pretty OP. I'm open to suggestions. Yes. All right. Rogue. They're very useful as well. Is I that, played that, a, that a uh, human? That's your it class. It can be whatever. That's the class. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Rogue is the class. Okay. Yeah. Tiefling is the, is the race. Um, the race. I played a Warforged monk that's specked into stealth so it was like a sneaky boy but like a ninja like a robot ninja and one yeah. campaign it was pretty cool I'm I don't know up, why you have to not do that now I'm thinking Hello, about being a, um, a human podcaster um, <laughs> that's uh, oh, you cast pods yeah like literally, I cast pods, pod right? uh, yeah and I'll be Tide pods. 42 years old and bald I and cast podcast level one <laughs> Well, that is pretty much where we're at, level one podcast. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone's asleep. I'm going to be like, my name will be Paul Carson. Trent Huskins. <laughs> Trent Huskins is a badass name. That's for anyone who's in who's deep into Grand National Championship lore. Our one of our old uh, co-hosts, a robot named uh, Acronym, suggested that Corin. Shanti Francis Corin Francis Shanti is it Shanti first Corin Shanti Francis Lapointe Atchison wasn't a super great name and it wasn't one that like would be a good action star so that he suggested that maybe Corin uh, change his name to Trent Huskins which I thought was a pretty very masculine name. Yeah. very yeah. very like you could picture it's, Trent Huskins with a shoulder holster you know it's up there with Mike truck Mike truck that's a real person right Oh, I, mean, I was thinking of Mike Trout, players. the baseball player. Yeah, I thought I was. <laughs> Bobson Dugnut. Oh, yeah. Bobson it's a Dugnut. heavy, heavy oh. callback. <laughs> Mike Trout would also be good, but only Mike if he were a Trout. giant trout, obviously. Yeah. Like, top yeah. half of his body what? is a fish. All right. Yeah. Well, in tr- traditional fashion, I feel like we've kind of stumbled to a stop, like a, a cube rolling downstairs. Um, so that'll do it for us, right? Sure. Sure. All right. Well, uh, we'll see you next week. Uh, we're going to hear some music coming up. I don't even know what it's going to be yet, but it's going to be some good stuff. And if you check the description in the podcast or if you watch the YouTube video, it will be readily apparent what has been chosen for this second and final set of music. That'll do it for us. For Jared McLeod, Corin Atchison, Corin Shanti, Francis LaPointe Atchison, and Jotham Fady. I'm Alistair St. Hill. We'll see you next time. Goodbye, goodbye. Goodbye, goodbye. Bye, bye, bye. Bye, bye, bye. Bye, guys.
Hi, this is No Milk. This doesn't have the title yet. Taking it back. I screwed it up. I can't call you back, so I have to start over. Okay. Untitled. Taking it down, putting it out. I really want it been all about to burst and forget to breathe. Would you remind me? I know it's been so long. Can we catch a show again? Will we make it? Can you take it by post or telegram? I know the bravest people know there's a reason to be there. I get all choked up remembering and I'm still where I want to be. In case I'm ready or because it means so much to say I came apart in the right way. I hope it's not too late.